Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Starship webinar. Today, we're going to take a look at the SAP Business One integration and talk a little bit about how you can supercharge your LTL shipping with Starship. First, a little bit about V Technologies as a company. We've been around for 33 years since the late 80s with a total customer base of over 10,000 users, uh, integrating with uh, your traditional parcel carriers, UPS and FedEx, amongst the whole host of other LTL common carriers. And today we're gonna to focus on the SAP Business One integration. What Starship allows you to do with SAP Business One is connect all the different um, types of orders that you're getting, whether they be from uh, traditional ERP orders, uh, EDI, uh, e-commerce, you're merging all of those different order sources into one application uh, with connections into your warehouse management or EDI solutions. And then Starship can be that hub to process all of your various types of transactions, whether they're parcel or freight transactions, and then update the various systems and notify customers. So you're kind of completing that loop and touching all the various portals where your order information comes from. So you can have real time results and tracking status uh, wherever you need to see that. Just a quick look here at some of the various carriers that we support. Uh, as I mentioned, we do all the you know, common small package carriers that you may be familiar with. And then Starship has integration to about 20 different common carriers for LTL. Uh, we also integrate with a number of different uh, third-party logistics companies, names like CH Robinson, Worldwide Express, Freight Quotes. If you see the slide here and you don't see the carrier that you have direct integration to, feel free to contact your customer account manager. We're always looking for suggestions on ways that we can improve the software and tracking enhancement requests for various carriers. As I mentioned, Starship also has hooks into a number of different e-commerce platforms. So Starship can also augment what you're doing with Business One by connecting directly into the marketplace or the shopping cart that you have orders for, or more commonly, it can work as an extension of the ERP. So if you have um, a utility that takes all the e-commerce transactions and puts those into Business One, Starship can then retrieve that information from the Business One transaction, process the order, will both update Business One and the e-commerce platform at the same time. So you're putting the status of the order, uh, the tracking information, the freight, any detail about the shipment back into the marketplace or in the cart. So if you're pushing your customers there to that portal to see that, they'll have the notifications and the status over there as well. And with that, we're going to jump into a product demonstration. Okay, this is the Starship web client here. Uh, this is a refreshed look for the traditional desktop client that's still also available with Starship. This is more or less the way forward in any of the new releases. You have a browser-based user interface here that connects over to the server, and then you can uh, set up the client for any number of seats for users out in the warehouse. There's also a front office dashboard as well. we'll take a look at that towards the end of the presentation. Um, in retrieving orders from Business One, you typically have a barcode on your pick sheet or your order acknowledgement. You can simply wand over that and scan in the order. Starship can also connect into uh, deliveries and invoices in Business One. You also have the ability uh, with uh, the deliveries to retrieve any of the package information. So if you're using uh, one of the uh, warehouse management solutions such as Lysis or Lisa, uh, depositing that package information back into Business One, we can retrieve that and bring it directly into Starship Packed Up. Uh, there's also some filters here, so you can do uh, some some filters on any of the order header information. Any of these fields here, you can look at to filter and narrow down the view of the order transactions. But again, if you just enter or scan in the order that you want to ship over here. Starship will go ahead and talk to Business One, bring that information into the client, and then you can begin your shipment processing. So starting here at the top, you have all the order information. So the company that you're connected to, the order that was selected, 
You also have uh, the return address and the ship to address. We'll pull that over from business one. And you'll notice next to the ship to address, there is a green checkbox to let you know that we validated the address. Starship has the ability to check the city state zip, add the zip plus four for the postal formatting. If you choose that as a preference, uh, we can also get into the street address, the suite, the apartment number, and probably most importantly, the zone. If you have a rural area, a residential address, uh, we're gonna pick up any of those additional surcharges and apply that standardized postal formatting. Any of those fuel surcharges or delivery area surcharge would be added into the freight if you're passing that back into the invoice. Instead of uh, tabs on the screen, you now have these widgets here, so you can drill into any of those if you want to uh, access any of the information. Look at our packaging here. And then you can also customize the view here based on what fields you want to see on the user interface. Uh, so we've given you the ability to remove or add fields here as needed. If we want to drill into the packaging a little bit more, we can switch to the packing assistant and then we can see the item distribution between your loose items, your packages, and your pallets. Go ahead and expand this view here. So you can see the items packed into which container and then which pallet that's on. And you can also do aggregate packaging. So if you don't want to specify the particular quantity of packages or items in a particular package or how many packages are on a pallet, you can just put in the total quantity here. Same thing for your packages and pallets. Once we have everything packed up, if we're ready to process the transaction, we can do that here, ship and process, or you have your common program functions enabled here with keyboard shortcuts. F3 will process your transaction. We can also rate shop. So if we wanna do a cost comparison between all the available methods to us, Starship's gonna go out to all the common carriers we have set up on this particular system and give you a list of options that you can then choose from. We'll stick with the ship via that came over from the sales transaction. But, but you can see here, there's a number of other uh, methods that we can get it there by. And you can sort here by the price or the transit time. You can also map over a date and time when that needs to be there by, and we'll filter out any of the results that can't make that transit time. Above the rate shopping, you can also drill into the charges here. So you can see exactly what the price is, what your discounts are, any surcharges, and then any handling fees also be itemized here. We're good with that. We'll go ahead and process our transaction. So again, ship and process or F3 will print out your documents, return those values back into uh, the business one application, send off all the information to your EDI solution, and then also update any e-commerce platforms that you may have. Starship will uh, print out your bill of lading, as many copies as you need. Uh, we have a basic uh, straight bill of lading built in that can be modified with any kind of formatting changes that you're looking for. And once you've processed that, uh, we'll bring you back over here to the first field, the cursor will be there so you can scan or enter in the next transaction and move along with the workflow. So let's take a look back in business one at those results. Open our transaction here. So Starship's going to uh, put information uh, into the order notes. So we'll let you know when that went out, when it's gonna get there, how it was shipped, piece count, tracking information that can appear on any of the order acknowledgements, the invoice, packing list that you may be printing out of business one. Your pro number for your freight will be listed here. If this is a parcel ship and also your tracking information will go there as well. And then if you have the contents packed up, you'll have each of the containers that were shipped out with the contents of each of those packages we can distribute back into the deliveries. As I mentioned, you can also read the package contents that are packed here, whether they 
are entered manually through the Business One user interface or through your WMS, we can pick that up directly on the Starship client. Starship also has a SQL extension, so we have the ability to uh, strip out individual fields of data and plug that into uh, different places in uh, Business One. So if you have some custom fields that you've added, we have the ability to both read and write uh, data to any of those as well. Take a look at some of the other bills of lading that we can produce. As I showed you, you have the straight bill of lading. This is kind of a standard template uh, that you get to produce. You can have multiple copies. And then, of course, all your order header information will display here. If you have third-party billing or a logistics company uh, that picks up the bill for that, we can have their information mapped over or stored in Starship to appear in the bill of lading. You also have the VIX bill of lading format. So you can pick and choose between different formats, between carriers, between customers, adding print conditions to enable that. If you're doing a truckload or multi-stop type shipment, there's also a master bill of lading. And this is good if you have multiple orders that you want to consolidate. Uh, you also have the ability to consolidate multiple individual shipments uh, around, say, a distribution center or um, a store where you have multiple orders going to the same place. You can also group them in Starship and have them appear in the master bill of lading. Uh, any of the carriers that we have direct integration with for um, LTL, you also have the ability to retrieve documents from those carriers. So just a couple examples here. You have the FedEx bill of lading, the R&L bill of lading. So any of those carriers that we're supporting, you have the ability to get uh, any documents that they support, bills of lading, and the labels as well for your packages and pallets. The advantage of using the Starship documents is you have the chance to go in and modify the content of those forms. We'll take a look here at one of these documents. You could use our template designer to modify the content of any of these forms. So we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. Here's the actual printed format of that document. And then this is what's underneath all that information that you'll see on the page. So we can take any of the information that's here and customize that to have whatever level of detail we're looking for here. You could take our text, wipe that out, put your own information on there, or free up some space on the page. You have all these objects over here on the left-hand side that you can drag and drop onto the page. So if you want to do some branding, add a logo or a graphic onto the page. You have the ability to draw on the documents. Barcodes, any fields of data, we can populate that with any Business One data or Starship fields, and then turn that into a barcode. Uh, bands of text, where you have columns of data line up here, each individual field and blocks of text. So we can take any of that data here and manipulate that to grab an additional field. There's different categories of data here. So right now we're in our bill of lading fields. You have different headers here for all the various categories of data. If we want to look for line item fields, we just navigate to that section. And then here's all the various fields. So if you see that data on the screen in a field in Starship, you can take that information and place it anywhere you want on that document. Once you have this set up the way you'd like, do a save as here give that a unique name, and then this is another version of that document that you can then produce. And you have the ability to uh, have as many different versions or iterations of this document as you need. So you can have 15 different bills of lading, each with their own unique formatting changes. And we can assign that to a particular customer, a distributor, a carrier, whatever the case may be. Any of these documents, uh, besides the hard copies, can also be sent to PDF. Uh, so Starship has something nice that can be done with any of the PDFs. Uh, of course, you know, you can store those in an archive outside of the database. They'll always be accessible on the client. Uh, but Starship has an email notification. Uh, so you have uh, the ability to send out custom email notices. Same as the printed forms, you can set up your own email templates here with your own branding, colors, links back into your site. But the nice thing about the PDFs is you can have with your email that goes out, 
the ship notification, any of those documents that are produced. So a copy of a packing list, a bill of lading, if it's going overseas, any uh, export documents that we may produce, hazmat paperwork, any of that stuff can be uh, PDF and then attached to the email that goes out. Uh, so putting that into the hands of the folks that need it. And there's also conditions that you can set up on the emails so that uh, we're sending the right information based on the audience. So hopefully if uh, you're proactively notifying your customers of the order status, the fact that it's been shipped, providing them with any copies of the documents that cuts down on the number of inbound customer service calls that you're receiving as to the status of the load, um, you can send that out automatically. Uh, you do have, of course, access to the information back in Business One. So anyone with uh, access to the, uh, the inquiry screens from Business One has the ability to go in and look at the status there. Uh, Starship also has a front office utility as well that can be provided to anybody in sales or customer service, accounting that needs to do any lookups on the data. And this is the dashboard. It gives you the ability to uh, run some reports. You have a number of charts here with these widgets. They give you some analytics for your freight spend and your activity over a period of time. You can look at shipments by carrier, by user, uh, by mode of transport, uh, look at trends for your top top customers, your top carriers. So you have access to those. You also have this heat map here that can show you exactly where the concentration of most of your shipments are going to in the, in the country. And then you also have access to the history here. So you can go through uh, your history with the date range, and then you can sort on any of the fields here. Uh, so you can do lookups on pretty much any data. You can run a query here and, you know, of course, look at your common order fields like customer ID, PO number, order invoice number, address fields, any of those common ERP fields that you want to grab from Business One and do a lookup. You can cross-reference the shipment here in Starship. So if we have any data in that field, you can do a lookup here, find that information. Get one of our shipments here. This can give you some expanded access to uh, the, the front office for the ability to look at your historical shipments, a little more detail on the breakdown of the freight charges. If that's ever a question, you can reprint uh, documents from here, look at the tracking status, and see exactly what was done out in the warehouse. That comes with the license, does not take up any of your seat licensing. You have uh, the ability to lock down the users uh, with roles and permissions on the server side. So if you want to restrict those users' access to the client to actually perform any shipments, on the server side, you can set up unique user logins and permissions based on what you want to give them access to. So you have your user logins here. If you have multiple sites, you can also limit which locations they have access to. And then each user has a role within the company and you can lock down these different menus or functions that you want to give them access to. You could set them up as just a dashboard only user. I'd like to thank everybody for your time and attention today. Thanks and have a great day.